Welcome to Gurneys with Nord, episode 62. We have our Gen Z friend here, Sophie, joining us again. How many times have you done this before? Four, maybe five. Four. Oh, Aaron saying five. Five. So we wanted to talk about pop culture and felt like somebody that wasn't 39 should probably come on and discuss it as well. Like for me, pop culture is, well, I just read Anna Karenina. Have you read that? What? We're going to talk, obviously we're talking about Scandaball, right? Yep. We have to discuss it. I am embarrassed, horrified, shocked to admit that I too was pulled into this. I hate reality television, but it was impossible to ignore. You didn't watch it. No. You didn't watch it. You watched The Reunion. Yeah, I had never watched Vanderpump Rules before until Scandal happened. And then I watched the, all the Reunion episodes yeah. that just happened. Which, bless you. I Incredible. mean, that's like six hours, right? Or something. Yeah, and I would rewatch it. It was <laughs> the best TV I've ever seen. <laughs> It's such an interesting case study in what we talk about all the time in our larger vision that social and influencers is going to be the dominant form of brand communications that this is driving you know again i'm not a i'm not a, a dedicated vanderpump rules uh, i'm sure there's like a name for these people like a fandom name yeah is there a i fandom don't know what name? it is is that what it is who knows it i like be. that vanderpunk let's yeah. just go with it uh i'm not a vanderpunk myself uh i could see that working but i do think the show was like in like basically on life support I don't even think we have to explain it because like if you're watching this show and you haven't heard of what's going on, like I don't even know. The conversation and the content on social, I think drove a lot of the performance of the show, obviously. Mm -hmm. You are banned from Twitter, so uh, you aren't getting it there. You're getting it on TikTok. And I don't spend as much time on TikTok, I spend a lot of time on Twitter and Instagram. So I think we have an interesting uh, kind of juxtaposition there, but more people watched the Vanderpump Rule finale than Succession, which is an actual piece of art, right? Uh, and is incredible. And we're going to talk about later. Uh, how many people watched that finale? It was 4.1 million people watched the finales. Okay. This is driving a huge amount of money for Bravo. This is like an enormous win for them. And something that I hadn't really thought of so much, but yesterday you were like, yeah, well, that would have never happened without social. So explain like what you think worked and how TikToks and, and tweets ended up in like this enormous cultural moment. Usually when a TV show happens, let's say 10 years ago, like you can really only talk about it with your friends who also watch the show. And I feel like with social and this happening, this was obviously a huge thing, but then creators were able to go on TikTok and create content like synthesizing what had happened and then like adding their take or trying to piece together timelines of shit that was sketchy. And so I ended up pulling the number because I was wondering. So um, hashtag Scandaval on TikTok has 888.9 million views, which is nearly a billion views. It's a lot. It's like 10 Super Bowls. That's insane. Yeah. That's a third of the earth. Right. Obviously and those so, aren't unique, but that's a lot. And uh, I was someone who had never, I'd never really heard of Vanderpump Rules. I'm not a Bravo person at all. I do like reality TV, but I don't like go into that end of it. And after se getting served it so many times on my For You page, I like fully tuned in. And now I will watch that show until the end of time because I'm so locked in on what's happening. But that would have never happened had it not been on my TikTok page. It's these like big characters that you can kind of like make fun of a little bit. There was the like internet sleuthing side of things which i feel like they they do love to like try and like figure out a mystery almost to a fault almost to a fault such an example of how social can move things outside of social and it's interesting to see you know i think traditionally you would think oh social is this thing where yeah people can discuss a show that they are watching but what's interesting here is that like what was happening on this show it was like that anticipation of like knowing that this affair had happened and then like everyone waiting to see that happen on the show and to kind of see it come out. For like non-believers, people that like poo-poo creators and influencers and say that this is not actually going to be a big force. Um, I think you only have to look at that and say like something like Session, which is, you know, wildly influential, award-winning show to get less views than the finale of Vanderpump Rules, uh, which again, I think as of a year ago was a pretty niche show, is fucking wild, honestly, and such a testament to the power of social. Now, coming out of that, 
the characters in the show have gotten a lot more famous. Brands have wanted to jump in, and I think a couple of them have done so in a way that's like pretty interesting. Could you just walk us through uh, a few of those partnerships and what you think like worked? Overall, something that we struggle with on our side is brands or clients will tell us like, we wanna be really nimble and be reactive to what's happening. And then they kind of like clam up or like things can't get moved along quick enough or they can't sign off on like a fun or cheeky creative. And the thing that I liked about all of these brand deals was they moved quickly and they signed off on a cheeky creative. You had just said as we were going through all of them, like you can't do this your whole career. Like you can't talk about being cheated on. And it's like, I think like these three, there, there will be no more after this because now it's already been done. The moment's over. One, yeah, totally agree. Like that it is so hard for brands to like get approvals done quickly. But I think in this moment, it's like they probably knew they've got a month to really capitalize on this. And to your point, 10 brands can't do it. Let's walk through the Bic example first. Mm -hmm. Good morning. It's about time I shared my truth about something that's irritating me lately. Their marketing director said that after they did the sponsorship with Ariana Maddox, sales boosted by 35% for a two week period. Highest social media engagement for Bic's razor division within the last two years. That's insane. Yeah. The creative was really funny, talking about unclogging her life, feeling like something has already been, always been in her way, AKA making of Javits, Tom Sandoval. And they said that they turned it around in three weeks, like had it ideated and executed and posted within three weeks. So that was just like, perfect. Yeah. The Duracell one was also great. And Duracell's guaranteed to last 12 years. That's much better than 10. In that same thing, it was a little like tongue in cheek. I felt like it, they did a great job of like winking at the audience. Like if you had had no idea what was going on, it just looks like a sponsored post. I did not know that they actually like talked about batteries in the show. Okay, so the thing with the batteries is that in the show, when Tom Sandoval is trying to justify his affair, he talks about how he felt like the relationship was very one-sided, that he was doing everything in the relationship. Liz, I'm the reason that the, there's batteries in the drawer, that there's toilet paper stocked, that there's paper towels stocked. She never does any of that kind of stuff. It was always me. They were a able to like capitalize on things that were like winks and hints, but also putting in product messaging that was important. Like now I know that Duracell batteries last 12 years right. because they made the hint that 12 years is so much better than 10 years, which was how long their relationship was. I think yeah. they did it beautifully. In these moments, obviously like this is a big budget. This is like, this is a big, you know, a deal again. And like, I'm sure it was honestly pretty competitive to see like which partnerships she would do. Being able to see that moment in culture and like see yourself in it. And I think like, have a little sense of humor. This is something we see with like Cole's Cash and our who's a who's a client of ours and we love, right? And they have also kind of like embraced it a little bit, right? There was this meme going around about like dancing for Cole's Cash and you know, they ended up kind of like responding and doing some like tongue in cheek stuff with it and I think it's like really refreshing to see brands who can see something happening on the internet and then like jump in and this is I think what we talk about of like engaging in a community before you leave it but before you lead it but like you have to like jump in and be part of the joke a little bit right and I think they did both did a great job with that. If you want any more information on Scandaval and the sponsorships that happened there we have a Hot Talks article that covers it on the blog which we will link in the description below. What was the like reaction on TikTok like obviously they had an impact on sales they worked um, but what was the impact like in the community? We often talk about with clients how sometimes they think that talking about being in your bag or making a sponsorship or having a sponsored post is bad, but it was more so everyone being stoked that she was making money off of this, but also that the Easter egg stuff with the Duracell stuff, I think made it so shareable within like that community of viewers and just everyone talking about it online to be like, did you notice the white nail polish? Did you notice the paper towels, the toilet paper, like all of these subtle hints to people who watch the show, um, which I think also just is like a job well done for the creative to like actually know those type of references and put them in when you're gonna partner on something like this. But generally I thought everything, everyone was stoked. Everyone yeah. thought it was hilarious. Being nimble and making sure you are like participating in these communities. What other advice do you think you kind of like, what else is there that's like a, a takeaway? 
I mean, I think we already kind of mentioned this, but I think like taking risks creatively. I also think this shows that it's okay to like put higher production in sponsored posts. Like that's something that we've been leaning into more just because there's only so much organic content in UGC that you can make. And I think there's sometimes a lot of payoff with having something that's a bit more brand led and orchestrated if it's done correctly. Working quickly and efficiently and taking creative risks, I yeah. feel like is another big one. And we can probably show some of that, like, uh, and you were involved in the newly work that mm -hmm. we did. And, and I was really interested to see, and I think this is a change, you know, while on the whole, people still want more raw, in the moment content. We, and we'll show some of what we shot for newly, but that that content did better. Oh yeah. You know, uh, which is a little counter, intuitive. Over the last five years, I feel like the trend has been increasingly away from high production, away from professionally shot things. When do you think it's right to shoot something professionally and why do you think uh, that is working? There's obviously nuances to this, but I think it works really well when you have a type of either brand messaging that's really hard to get across when you're just leaving the creative completely to an influencer because it can sound really rigid like for newly the whole campaign was more life in your clothes which can be really hard for an influencer to try to translate in like a raw and unfiltered way um, and so you're able to like tackle that creative messaging through being able to like have more ownership on the creative but then i also think with activating with people online who aren't necessarily creators first like a lot of the people we partnered with Meredith is a chef, a private chef first. Didi was a ceramicist artist. Like they're not, I mean, Meredith is, but Didi is not used to like talking to camera, speaking to camera content. She doesn't create that. People follow her because she's a really interesting artist who has a really cool POV and being able to tell her story in a way that we knew would work and not fucking her over in a sense by giving her a, a creative that she wouldn't feel comfortable executing. We were able to control the environment and creative in a way that ended up being really successful because we did end up basically A-B testing it and doing it with a group of influencers who would create it themselves and doing it with us with Aaron as a production partner and it worked perfectly. Like Meredith's video I think got like 300,000 organic views in an hour of it being posted yeah. which is insane. Yeah. It's kind of adjacent to that like giving the bag, celebrating the partnership kind of feeling that I think has been like more prevalent in social and with influencers. I'm so used to seeing your raw content. Now I'm seeing something really professional. That's cool. I guess to, to crystallize my question, like is this just like, oh, this works sometimes or is this the beginning of like a, a slightly larger trend back to professional content? I think it's potentially a trend that is gonna like I think it's cyclical like we've ran UGC unfiltered shit into the ground and now it's gonna be professional and then there will be a time and when we're sick of professional it's back to raw like I think it'll just loop around and around and I wonder if some of that is that for many people on TikTok who maybe that was their first social media channel that they like really embraced like we've been through it on Instagram maybe and seen the like, you know, raw professional back to raw, but TikTok has been all raw. And so maybe it does need to have like a couple of years of like things being more professional before maybe then people will get sick of that. Brand partnerships, um, it's an interesting opportunity. And again, the, the data is there that like, uh, we were surprised to see and pleased that like the professionally shot brand led did outperform the creator led in, in that instance. To like finish up with television, let's talk about the idol. Mm -hmm. Okay, because this one was interesting. There was a lot of conversation about it. I was saying to you that like spending time on Twitter and seeing the way people have talked about it, like the first I kind of heard of this show, really people started talking about it when the reviews started coming in. Mm -hmm. And they were like, this is the worst rated television show of all time. In my Twitter feed, at least, it is being eviscerated to the point where I feel like I am, I have, as you said, been de-influenced. Like, I am like, I'm not even gonna engage. Usually I would give like an HBO sh show a chance, but you are saying on TikTok, the mood is a little different. Oh yeah. I had known that it was getting shit ratings, but again, I'm not on Twitter, so I wasn't like completely engulfed in it. I just had like 
rumblings that that was happening. But on my TikTok feed, it's like everyone is learning the choreography, is learning the dance. They're like, this song is a fucking bop. Like, Lily Rose Depp is bringing back pop single-handedly with The Idol. I at first felt really uncomfortable watching the show. And then my partner was like, we need to keep watching. It's like a car crash. Like, mm -hmm. I want to keep watching it so that I know what's going on culturally and I can participate in these conversations. And I do think it is a show that's catered more to a younger audience. Like, I think they said the average viewer was 21 years old and younger, which is fucking insane to me that they're watching the shit that they're watching in this show because it's actually psychotic. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm like fully tuned in and That's I'm like a, leaning into it. Like, yeah. I don't care if it's bad. Uh, I didn't know there was a lot of dancing uh, or original music. Um, so it makes sense that it would do well on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like I feel like it's your your age group is like de-influencing everyone to watch it. My age group is like... Screw it. Yeah. 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 TikTok is generally more of a place for like, is this fun? Um, and can we like have some fun with this. It seems like they are. Twitter is no, no fun. You cannot have fun there. It's not allowed anymore. <laughs> yeah, since I got banned. I don't have a check. It's... Don't you have a check? No, I didn't pay for a check. Oh. Maybe if you were willing to pay for a check. I can't though. That's right. I'm You're banned. You're banned. <laughs> Puny little girly pop. Yeah, do you know what you did? No, you I don't, don't know. I have like hit my limit of being able to talk about pop culture. I feel like thank you for coming on and sharing and uh, always lovely to have you. Thanks for having me. Succession. I thought Succession was perfectly wrapped up. I think Shiv Roy actually did end up winning because she ends up not having to fucking work and her baby daddy is the heir to the throne. That is like ideal. They ended it as perfectly as they could have. It was incredibly satisfying. Uh, and I was just happy to see a big show like that show some restraint and like end it. I'm sure they could have written up season five. I would have watched the shit out of it. But I'm so glad that they were like, we had an idea. We have completed that idea and it is over and it's time to move on. And I think it's a good, it's a good lesson for anyone doing something creatively. I have communicated what I wanted to. I have taken this as far as it can go and anything further will be like the seasons of The Office where Steve Carell wasn't there. And you're like, literally, why are you people doing this? The this Office wasn't good. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Next week. <laughs> <laughs>